we hear a lot about the problems, and we hear about them from every realm, from you know, concerned citizens, from voters, from animal advocates. And if you choose not to get involved, if you choose not to take a stand, if you choose not to vote, I think you've kind of given up your right to complain. And I think that if everyone got involved, we would accomplish a lot more. So here's how we do what we do. Voters sign up for voting blocks, and if you visited our booth out in the vendor area, you'll see that there's a sign-up form to join your voting block. And really that's giving us just your details, your name, your address, your phone number, and your email. We need your email because that's going to be the main way that we communicate with you. Your address tells us what district you're in and who your representatives are. And we need your phone number in case we can't read your email address. Um, the, uh, the PAC then informs voters prior to primaries and then prior to election day which of their candidates have proven to be animal friendly. And then we ask our voting block members to show up and vote. And this is how we change elections. You've heard a lot about advocacy through this whole conference. There's a reason, there's a theme there. It's because we have found that although spay and neuter is a critical component and it has to happen, it can't solve our problem alone. Education, absolutely another critical piece, but it can't pro solve our problem alone. What we've discovered is that we have to have leaders who believe in our mission. We have to have leaders who are willing to be educated. Now our politicians cannot know everything about everything. So this is the industry that's important to us, so it's up to us to educate them so that they do know. And we want representatives that are willing to hear our message, that are willing to talk to us and learn more. In fact, do we have any elected representatives in the room today? We do, thank you, where are you from? And are you city council? Yes, I am. Wonderful, thank you for being here. Yep. As well as tethering ban. Okay, so she said that. In, yep, and so in Dearborn, she supported both the anti tethering ban as well as um, no BSL. So the way we are organized is first of all, we're all volunteers. We don't have any paid staff. And we, because we operate throughout the state, we have to have captains in different areas. Um, and I guess I'll give, you, I'll give you a little history here. Uh, I'm from Oakland County. And so Oakland County is my animal shelter. If my animals were to get lost, that is where they would show up. So I have a very vested interest in how they operate. And so they weren't operating how we thought that they could, that there was a lot of room for improvement. Now we're talking about the largest county in our state, and we're also talking about the wealthiest county in our state. And when we looked at their numbers, we thought, wow, there's a lot of room for improvement here. Let's work with them and show them how. So um, we've been doing that for a couple years, and we weren't getting anywhere. We had an opportunity, our, our shelter director resigned, he was moving out of state, so here was our opportunity to get that compassionate leader to lead our shelter out of the killing and into a save rate that could make our community no kill. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Um, the Oakland County administration is full of ex-police officers who've worked together. And so when that position became open, they gave it to their buddy, an ex-police officer. And um, he didn't apply for the job and he had no interest in it, but um, that is who now runs our shelter. So in hitting these brick walls, we decided we needed to take it a, a step up. And we'd been going to county commissioner meetings for about two years and we just weren't getting anywhere. So um, we heard about other states doing more political things, Maryland being one of them that does it very well. And um, we read about it and we looked into it and a group of advocates came together and said, okay, then let's form a political action committee. If they won't listen to us as concerned citizens, maybe they'll listen to us when we're a block of voters who hold their job in our hand. And wow, it sure worked. Uh, within a couple of weeks, all of a sudden we had their attention. And when we were speaking during county commissioner meetings, they were no longer turning their back to us. They were engaging and making eye contact. Some of them were asking us if we could have coffee and just talk and understand the issues better. Now this is after two years of speaking to them at every county commissioner meeting during public comment. So we said, all right, this seems to be at least getting their attention. And we decided, you know, this is an opportunity to expand it to the entire state of Michigan. So although we were born in Oakland County, we are operating throughout the state to try and help communities improve. Oh, I should talk about the city coordinator. So, because we can't be everywhere, and most of us do live in the Oakland County area, this, this area of Michigan, we decided we needed a city coordinator in every city in Michigan. So this is, a, it's usually a resident, it doesn't necessarily have to be, but it's better if it is. And their job is to go to the city council meetings and to develop a rapport with those city council members. And so that when an animal issue comes up, they know who to go to. 
And so if someone comes up and says, you know, we're going to, this TNR thing, I don't think we should do it. Let's pass a law that says TNR is illegal. You can't feed outdoor cats. We're going to round them up and kill them. So if we have a city coordinator sitting there and hearing this, we're able to mobilize our voters in that area and get in front of that law before it passes. So it is a way for us to keep our finger on communities and to become a go-to person. And if that city council is split, some of them are for it, for it, some are against it, or some just aren't sure, they know who to go to to get more information. Let us come in and educate you. Let us work with you and help you deliver to your residents, your constituents, what it is they're asking for. Because the bottom line, end of the day, is they work for us. We've, repre we've elected them to represent us. So city coordinators are really important, and sometimes we have co-city coordinators who they'll share the job. Um, and I'll give you guys some examples of where we're doing this and, and how it's working. So on um, the next level up is our county. And so our county government, are, sometimes there's an executive and sometimes there isn't. Every county is a little bit different. Um, but usually there's a board of commissioners or a board of trustees, and they're responsible for the ordinances and laws in the county. So we need a county captain. And we need a captain in every one of our 83 counties in Michigan, and a lot of times we'll have co-county captains as well. Their job is much like the city coordinator. Attend the county commissioner meetings, develop a rapport with them so that you're their go-to person should animal issues come up. Farm animals, wildlife, companion animals. So here's a little bit of our history. Like I told you, we started out just advocating to improve our shelter, and um, when we weren't getting anywhere, we decided we would go the political action route. Um, and we were finding communities, and I'll use Hazel Park as an example. They passed BSL nearly overnight. We didn't know it was coming. And we didn't have a city coordinator in that town. So it just it happened. And I'll step into my animal rescue role. I, um, I had three foster care homes in Hazel Park that would foster pit bulls for us. When I lost those three, I was left with one. So now when I pull animals, I pull dogs, I can only pull one, um, you know, until that one's adopted, and then I can pull one more versus four. Um, so it had a huge effect on us as a rescue. Uh, it had a huge effect on the community. Um, we're help we were helping a family who had just moved into Hazel Park. They didn't know the ordinance, um, and they had a pit bull, and it was a senior, and so they had to either get rid of their senior dog who had never committed a crime or done a thing in its life. It was really, you know, your senior dog rug, your feet. Um, and they had to either rehome their dog or move or find a place for it to go. So we try in this example to explain to city officials that you're tearing apart families. This isn't about dogs, it's about people. So when we saw communities were passing these things without any, any resident input, we knew we had to do something. We had to get into these communities and do it quickly. Um, we have groups that watch our federal level pretty closely and give us scorecards on how our federal representatives vote. Um, so we didn't feel we needed to focus there quite so much because there are people doing that. And we also have people watching our state level folks. So although we do endorse our state candidates, we don't focus on them quite as much as we focus on city and county. Because up until now, no one has been watching city and county. So we decided to meet our elected representatives where they are. What's important to them is their job. Now, I firmly believe that a lot of people went into being a public servant because they care about their community. They want to protect it. They want to make it better. Um, and then there's politics. And some really just aspire to be higher in politics. And that's fine, but they still have to represent their constituents. And they have to pay attention to what they want. So knowing that their job is important to them, and knowing that the way they keep their job or get a different job in politics is through voters. So we use the power of the vote to make change. There are a lot of political action committees that, um, that fundraise and give money to candidates so they can do advertisements. We don't do that. We want nothing to do with the money end of things. Any donations that we receive, we use to pay for our website, pay for business cards, um, vendor booths at events like this. We have no interest in giving money to candidates. Um, we may get to a point where we ourselves create ads for animal friendly candidates, but we're not there yet. Right now we are solely focused on the power of the vote. So those who were in Julie Lewin's session heard this and I'll repeat it. There's a few reasons why this works so well. Animal issues and children's issues are two of the only issues when people will cross party lines and vote accordingly. 
Many people vote Democrat, or they vote Republican, or they vote Independent, or usually it's how their family voted and it gets passed down. These two issues fall out of that category. So we know that there's a lot of passion there and we can energize voters. The other is, is that most people show up to vote every four years when the president is up for election and everything in between is pretty much ignored. So if we get our voting blocks out there during those non-presidential years and during primaries where nobody votes, then we can, we can affect elections and we can create change. How many people here have ever attended their city council meeting? That's good. Anybody ever attend a county commissioner meeting? Good, so you guys are already on the right path, right? Um, one of the things we need to focus on in Michigan is we've got to get more voters registered, and we've got to get those registered voters to go to the polls. Um, you know, this is not a new song and dance for a long time since before MTV rocked the vote. We have a voter problem. We have some apathy in that, that area where people think that my vote doesn't matter, it doesn't change anything. We have to convince them it does, because it does but they've kind of lost faith in that. So it's so important to vote. So we, again, are young, and as we grow and get bigger, we will be more and more powerful. Um, but right now we have to target areas. And if you have your 2013 map, uh, we focus on the red areas, as well as the areas we've been in working in for a couple of years. To come to an area, we have to, we have to be invited. Um, so today I was talking to somebody in West Branch and they're having some problems in West Branch. So we talked about how to get us there. So they've technically invited us to come speak to their community and all they need to do is provide us a location like a meeting room in a library, a conference room in a hotel, and let's put together a date and then we let the whole community know if you're interested in animal issues, come to this meeting. Whether it's farm animals, wildlife, or pets, come to this meeting. We're going to talk about what the issues are in West Branch, what we want to do about it, and how we're going to do it collectively as a group of voters. So we started in Oakland County. Uh, Genesee County is a huge target for us, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. Um, I started in Macomb County before my PACA existed, where I don't, if anyone was at the banquet last night and saw Executive Mark Hackle receive his Friend of Animals Award, um, I was one of the people who, who was invited to sit with Macomb County and talk about the issues and how we can change it. So going through that process and watching what they did to re resign their old director and get a new one in there, I really got a firsthand look at exactly how this worked and worked well. And ever since, Macomb County is going up and up. Right now, Livingston County and Macomb County are our two most animal-friendly counties in this area of Michigan. So we use them as examples a lot because they're doing the right thing and they're moving in the right direction. Um, we've had less success in Saginaw, <coughs> Lapeer, and St. Clair. And again, it's because we need, we need leaders in those areas. We've gotta have a county captain that's committed to this or co-county captains. And then in terms of cities, we're really focused in the areas that you see up there. Um, I'll use Taylor as an example. We were invited to Taylor, uh, what is it, 2014? It would have been last year, I believe. Their former mayor had decided that the, the shelter needed to just be a dog pound. Impound them, put them down, make some space, and that's all it was there for. He had, an, he had opposition running in the election, and his opposition said, I do not believe it's just a dog pound. I believe that our community wants this to be an animal shelter that saves lives. And so we backed him, and we endorsed his candidacy, and his voters came out and elected him. And the bad guy went out, and the good guy came in. And so we're seeing some improvements in Taylor. Sterling Heights, Warren, East Point, Roseville, and St. Clair Shores, we are working with them or against them, depending on who you want to talk to, about their TNR issues. So Macomb County has decided to do TNR and SNR, and these cities said, not in our cities, you're not. We want catch and kill. And so there is a battle taking place between the county and these cities regarding how this is going to be handled. Warren voted that they would like TNR that they do not want to use some vet clinic to kill all of their community cats. However, their, their, their directive is not being followed. So we're working with them on how to get their police chief and commissioner to follow what they've asked them to do. Um, St. Clair Shores um, had the police shooting of a resident's dog um, named Lexi. It was in the news a lot. It's still ongoing, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. And then Madison Heights. And Madison Heights is a great example of a community that wasn't having any problems. 
but we assigned a city coordinator who's a Madison Heights resident and she began attending all their city council meetings and after a while city council members go you know she's been here a lot anybody know who she is well let's find out so they go up and they introduce themselves and say well I, I've noticed you've been to a lot of our meetings you know what's going on and she explained well I'm here with Michigan's political action committee for animals and we're here to help you in case any animal issues come up they go, wow that's kind of neat the next thing that happened was the mayor pro tem contacted us and said, I want all of your model ordinances. Give me an ordinance that allows TNR. It's not that we don't allow it, but we never know when a politician could come in and decide not to. So let's get something in place now that supports TNR. I want something that will make sure that there's never BSL in our community. Um, you know, Madison Heights motto is city of progress. And they're not kidding. And so on an animal front, he asked us to bring him all of our best practices, model ordinances, and let's get them passed. So Madison Heights is an example, and we found that it works. When we can get into a city that's not having any issues, we're coming in as a partner, total cooperation and collaboration, and it's much easier. So now when an animal issue comes up, we know exactly who they're going to go to and ask for help. Um, we're doing the same thing right now in West Bloomfield. They're not necessarily having any issues, but we're introducing their city coordinator so that when and if they do, they know who to go to and we're able to get right in front of it if it's something that's anti-animal or get behind it and support it and bring our voting block out to let everybody know how much they want it to pass if it's pro-animal. So we want to get these city coordinators in these areas that aren't having problems so that we're ahead of the game and then we really have to energize in the areas where we are seeing some problems. It's very true. Um, just look at the pet industry, a billion dollar industry. Even when our economy tanked, you know, the real estate bust, one of the few industries that continued to profit was the pet industry. Pet supplies, people will feed their dog before they feed themselves. So that works for us. So we, um, in addition to endorsing politicians at every level, we work on some specific issues, and right now these are the six issues that we are focused on. And we'll talk about each one. I believe this um, not only tackles BSL, but also our shelter reform issue. Um, you've probably heard over and over and over that the way you can change what's happening in your public shelter is to get a compassionate leader in there. And I 100% am convinced because I've seen it in so many areas. So breed discrimination, probably everybody in here knows exactly what that is. Um, good thing to keep in mind is that it's not just banning a breed, it can also be restricting a breed. Um, I own a pit bull, and she is a very mellow, 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 I think she sleeps 20 hours a day, um, to the point where we go over and check her pulse, yep, still okay. And she's only four, she's just always been that way. If I lived in a community that said I had to walk her in a muzzle, I would destroy my dog. It would absolutely traumatize her. Um, and, and ruin her personality. So that kind of restriction, although she might not be banned, would still cause great damage um, to me and my dog. So we believe that no pet owner should be victimized, and we also believe very strongly that BSL is about the right to own a pet. So when we're talking to communities about BSL, either they want to do it and we're trying to convince them not to, or we're trying to overturn BSL already in place, we talk to them more about property rights which is very difficult for us to do because our dogs aren't property to us, they're family. However, from the point of the law, it's property right dispute. And there are 19 states in this country that have banned breed discrimination in their state, meaning no municipality can enact BSL. Um, if 19 states can do it, including Oklahoma and Texas, um, states that aren't known to be all that progressive in the animal welfare field, um, more red states, I should say, if they can do it, we can do it. And the way they did it was not about dogs, not about breeds. They did it about property rights. So when we're talking to politicians, we focus on that a lot. Right now, we are strongly, strongly supporting the Make Michigan Next campaign. If you don't know about it, go see their booth out there. The kickoff is September 17th. It's a rally happening in Lansing where we need a 1,000 voters to show up and show our elected officials we mean business. If 19 states can do it, so can Michigan. We want a, a law statewide that bans breed discrimination. And the municipalities that currently have it in place are going to have to replace it with pet responsibility, pet ownership responsibility acts. Um, we feel all dogs should be treated equally. We feel BSL makes communities less safe. So 
Be there September 17th. We need these politicians to understand we're very serious about this. And I really think that this is possible. We want to do it before the session ends at the end of December. If it doesn't, we'll get it reintroduced in January. But we really, really want to get it done now. So very important. And I'll tell you a little bit about it. Just a sec. Um, from 9 to 3, we've got vendors. And if you want to have a vendor booth, it's totally free if you're in animal welfare. If you're a retailer, it's only $20. At 11 o'clock that day, we're going to form a human chain leading from the steps of the Capitol down to Capitol Avenue. And then at noon, our speakers will begin the rally presentations and we'll end at 3. Anybody know why we have to do it during the week? Because our politicians are only at the Capitol Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And which makes our tasks more difficult because it means we've got to take time off of work and we have to go all the way up there. But this is one issue where it's worth it. Um, SNR and TNR. So a lot of people probably learned about SNR this morning at Kate Hurley's presentation, Shelter New to Return. Uh, we support it because it works. It is slightly controversial and it's very new. Macomb County is doing it and I believe they're the only public shelter right now in our state that is. So they're going to be our, our guinea pig and see how well it goes. Um, but we believe catch and kill doesn't work and we believe every community should be allowed to do TNR. Um, and if the county decides to do S SNR, we believe these municipalities should allow that as well. So we have a bill right now in our state legislature to allow TNR at a state level. So if it passes, no municipality would be allowed to say you can't TNR here. Um, it's been in the house for quite a while and it's just sitting there. If you go to our website, mypaca.org, and I have cards, I'll happily hand out like candy at the end, uh, we have a section um, that gives you all of the bills currently in the Senate, in the House, where they stand and what action we need people to take. We update it as frequently as we can, so it's also a good go-to place. But the TNR bill is there and it tells you who to call to get this thing moving. So I'm gonna play a little video. In Oakland County, we believe that the public welfare comes first. We also believe that feral cats pose a risk to the general public in the fact that they spread disease. We also believe that we want to do what's best for the animals and to release them into the wild, release them into sub-zero temperatures, release them into an environment where they're going to be prey for other larger animals is not the humane thing to do. So our position here in Oakland County is to protect the public welfare and to protect the animal, as silly as that might sound, it's better to humanely euthanize them, which we do. Believes that all, you know, all cats spread disease and we should kill them all. So this is an area where we think maybe, may, you know, Novi needs a new mayor. Uh, we have tried very hard to educate him so has Alley Cat Allies, so has Maddie's Fund, so has Kate Hurley, and we've gotten nowhere. So we've reached a point where we have to energize our voting block in Novi, and um, when the current mayor is up for election, we need to vote him out. That is how this works. And we get somebody in there who gets it, who will at least listen, who will take a meeting, who will, um, who will cooperate. And his city council, is not does not necessarily agree with him but he's the mayor so it's not even that we have to overturn the entire city council we just either have to get the majority and in most cases the, the mayor's vote means a lot uh, many of the same party and in this case he's a republican will follow how he votes so shelter reform this is a big one um you know we've learned a lot about save rates and um live release rates and our state is getting there. And like Debbie said this morning, we want to be completely purple. And right now we're too much of a rainbow. So our ultimate goal is to get every public shelter to a 90% or higher save rate. We know it can be done. We've heard it over and over throughout conference. And there is absolutely no excuse that works. It's kind of like the TNR. Every argument against TNR, what is the solution? It's TNR. So if the complaint is, is nuisance behavior, well, you, you TNR, well, well rabies, uh, if you TNR. <laughs> so um, shelter reform, got to get a compassionate leader in there and the rest follows. So we talk to shelters about the no-kill equation, what those programs are. We talk to them about the fact that some of them are, are low cost and some of them are actually revenue generating where you can bring money into your shelter through licensing, things like that. So you're gonna think I made a mistake here but it is the exact same video because our mayor of Novi is also the director of the Oakland County Animal Shelter. 
So our Oakland County Animal Shelter also believes in catch and kill. And any cat brought to them in a trap, whether it is just simply the neighbor's cat scared out of its mind because it got out of the house, all of them are killed. So regardless of the fact that we have educated and educated and educated, now the Oakland County Health Department has come out with a policy saying that um, feral cats spread disease and it is a public health and safety issue. So in Oakland County, we're at the point where our executive has to go. We have asked Brooks Patterson for meetings many times. He will not take them. And he has decided he is going to run for election again. Um, Brooks Patterson hasn't run the Oakland County government in a long time, not since his car accident. His deputies have been running it. And they don't mind if Brooks runs again because they get to continue to do what they want to do without any oversight. And they are not elected, they are appointed. So the buck stops with Brooks Patterson. And if he's not willing to get involved and make the changes that need to happen in Oakland County, as the residents have repeatedly begged, pleaded, and asked for, then it's time for him to go. So in order to do that, we are going to start organizing protests at his fundraising events. Because as um, if you heard Mr. Hackle speak last night, politicians are terrified of negative publicity. They are the smallest, tiniest blurb in a newspaper scares them terribly. They want to be liked, they want to be loved, they want people to vote for them. And I should also mention that we follow politicians through the life of their career. If they are no longer the county commissioner and they're running for governor, you're still the same person and we're still gonna, we're gonna follow you. So um, Oakland County being the county we've been working with the longest, um, that's where we're at. So we're gonna go for the top of the house and it's also important to note that there are only two seats in the entire Oakland County government that are held by Republicans, Brooks Patterson and our sheriff. And although we're a bipartisan pack, we are not Republican nor Democrat, we're completely bipartisan, um, you will see a trend in that Democrats tend to vote for animals more often, and it really just comes down to philosophy. Republicans um, believe in smaller government, and in order for us to help animals, we tend to need a little bit more government, more ordinances. So it's truly just kind of platform argument. Uh, boy, do we hear this a lot. It makes me crazy. Um, in any industry that you work in, what happens to you if you tell, tell, tell your boss that? You, it, we have to continue to change. And again, I don't care what industry it is. I work in the automotive industry. It is my responsibility to continuously keep up on new ways of doing things, ways that save the company money, being more efficient, learning new technology. Absolutely critical, and it absolutely applies to the animal welfare industry too. And this is where I hear it the most. Um, we were before a city council and the police chief came up during public comment and said, I have, will continue to run my city the way I have always run my city. And he's been there for 60 years. A lot has changed in 60 years. I think it might be time to do things a little differently. So I find this to be um, just, just, it makes me wanna rip my hair out. And when they say it, I follow him up and say that exactly what I just did, that that's unacceptable. If you're not willing to do things new, then you need to go find another job. Um, I'm gonna ask Roberta to come up real quick. Uh, Genesee County is one of the areas that we have focused on and Roberta has firsthand knowledge with the plight of Genesee County. And I asked her to come today to speak to you a little bit about how they've done what they've done and she can explain these pictures or I can. Um, but I want her to give you a flavor of what it's like to be on the ground working with a shelter that desperately needs change. It's a public shelter and how they got the level of support that they did. 